There are certain properties that you need to know about the normal distribution. The first thing is that it's a continuous distribution. All of the distributions that we've seen so far have been discrete. The values that x could take, or the values that the random variable could take, come, came from a discrete set of numbers. 0, 1, 2, and so on. But in this case, our probability distribution function is continuous, meaning that x can take on any value. In particular, the range of values that x can take go from anything from minus infinity, so basically the random variable could take on any value from minus infinity all the way up to positive infinity. On average, we'll see that the most likely value that the random variable will take is mu. And that is the location of the mean of the probability distribution function, or the expected value of the distribution. But if we also had some empirical data set that was distributed in a normal, uh, according to a normal distribution, then we would find that the mean, median, and mode are all equal to mu. And we're going to denote different locations on the x-axis here by, by the numbers of standard deviations away from mu the value is. So over here, we have the value of mu plus 1 sigma. So if this was a normal distribution, a standard normal distribution, the value of x when, when x equals mu is 0. And over here, we've got mu plus 1 sigma, 0 plus 1 sigma, so we've got the value 1. In this case, sigma squared is 1, and therefore, sigma equals 1 as well. Over here, we've got a value of minus 1. We're going to continue on this pattern, and we can have mu plus 2 sigma, mu plus 3 sigma, and mu minus 2 sigma, mu minus 3 sigma, and so on. It's important to recognize that this distribution is perfectly symmetric around the mean. With the normal distribution, we are going to look at the area under the curve to determine different probabilities. In particular, the probability that an observation from a normal distribution is between two numbers, we'll call those numbers A and B, is equal to the area under the normal probability curve between A and B. So, for example, if we had a value here and a value here, and we wanted to know what's the probability of obtaining a, of the random variable that's normally distributed, obtaining a value between A and B, well, that probability is going to be equal to the area of this shape. So we're going to go up from A, we're going to trace out the probability curve between A and B, go down to B, and then across. Now if we can calculate the area of this shape, that gives us the probability that the random variable will be equal to a, vari a value between A and B. Now the amazing thing about the normal distribution is that the probabilities are known, and they're known and it doesn't matter what values of mu and sigma are used to define the shape of the probability curve. The probabilities are known in general terms for any value of mu and sigma. So in this example, what we see is that the probability of obtaining a value between, say, the mean, mu, of the normal distribution and a value that's equal to mu plus one standard deviation away from the mean well, that probability is defined by this area, and it's given here as 34.1%. Similarly, if we had a value, if we wanted to know the probability of the random variable being between uh, mu minus two sigmas, so two standard deviations below the mean, and being just one standard deviation below the mean, mu minus sigma, well, that probability is given by this red zone here, and it's equal to 13.6%.